In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own digital kits using images you've stored on your computer. First, open up Digital Scrapbook Artist 2, then click on Start with a Blank Page. When the DigiKit browser window opens up, just click on the red X to close it. You now have a blank page, and all of the tabs on the left-hand side are empty. Go to the top of the screen and click on the DigiKit Creator button. You're now in your DigiKit Creator window, and you're currently in your Embellishments tab, and you know this because this area is highlighted. Now if you look in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see there's an Import button. This button allows you to import your own embellishments into the Embellishment tab. You also have one in your Backgrounds, you'll notice it right here, in your Materials, and in your letters. So you can individually add images to those categories. But personally, I find it much easier to go to embellishments, just add all of my images here, and then drag them into the proper categories. So I'll show you how I do that. First, click on Import, and if you have a few files to add, just click on Add Files. Now you can select the image you want to add and click on Open, or if you have more than one, you can hold down the Control key on your keyboard, and using your left mouse button, you can click on the different images that you'd like to add as well. Then just click on Open. If you want to do it a different way, you can hold down your left mouse button, and you can just drag around the various images you want to open, and then of course click on Open. Now if you've placed your images in a file folder, you can do it slightly different. I'll just click on Cancel. Just click on Import, click on Add Folder, find your file folder, click on it to select it, and click on OK. Give that a few seconds to open up. And then what you can do is just drag your images into the proper tabs. For example, with the letter B, I can just hold down my left mouse button and drag it into the Letters tab. Now over here, I've got a capital B, and I need to assign it a letter on my keyboard so that when I type that letter, this image will appear. I can go down here and I can start typing in the letter, or a much easier way is just to go up here. It's now uppercase. Click on uppercase B, and then click on OK. You'll see that my letter B is no longer in my Embellishments tab, and if I open up my Letters tab, you'll see that's where it is. If at any time you've got some openings in your letter that you're not too keen with, you can easily go over here to Tweak, and you can tweak your letter until you're happy with it. I'm going to go back to Embellishments, and if you want to start putting something in your background, you can take this image, for example, and just drag it into your backgrounds. When you do, this question will ask you, would you like to fit the new background to a 12 by 12? I'm going to say yes, and that is now gone. Over here I have a frame that already has the inside removed, so with this I can easily just drag it into my frames and then it goes in there automatically. If I had a frame such as this where there was no transparency to the middle, then I have to do a little bit more work on that before I can actually drag it into my frames, but that will be covered in my frames video. Over here, if you want to add some materials, I don't have any to add, but you could easily add them over here. Perhaps I want to add this in, so I could do that. I can click that, put it in my Materials tab, and that's now gone. As for brushes, if you have any brushes that you want to create, you could easily go over here, click on Create, and either create a brush or create a spray brush. Brushes are covered in my Brushes video tutorial. In swatches, if you want to make some complementary colors to match your digital kit, you can easily do that by clicking on Colors, and then the Color Palette Designer will open up. Now I do have a video that shows you how to use the Color Palette Designer, so you may want to watch that before you start creating any swatches. Over here is the Layout tab, and this is basically where your layouts go that you want to have in your DigiKit. It also um, gives you the very first image of whatever your layout is will represent your kit. Now if you had your own layouts, you could just click on Add and add them up, but since I don't have any, I'm going to create one. So first I'll click on Done, and what I'd like to do is go first to my Material tab, and I'm just going to drag this onto my blank page, then I'll go back to my Embellishments tab, and I'm just going to drag this right over here. I'd also like to go into my Backgrounds tab and try out my new background, and I'll just put that there. And then when you're happy with the placement of everything, let's just open this up, you're going to then see your layout below. Obviously, if you have more layouts and you want to add them to your DigiKit, just click on the layout that you want to highlight it, and then all you need to do is click on Add as DigiKit Layout.
It now goes over here in your layout sections and if you go back to your DigiKit up here, you're going to see that when you go into your layouts, it's right here. Now before you save your DigiKit, it's a great idea to start individually tagging all of these items. So let's say one day you want to search for a button. All you need to do is type in the word button and every button that's in any of your kits will appear as long as they have been tagged. So to tag an image, you just click on it to highlight it and then you go over here right in this section, you click once and then you just start typing. I'll type green space and I'll type the word button. And then when you're happy, you just click on add. Now at any time, you can continue tagging all of your different items. And if at any time you're not happy with the word that you've selected, you can just click on it and then click on delete and then add a different word if you wanted to. Once you've done that, all you need to do is save your DigiKit. So I'm going to click on Save DigiKit and whatever you name it, it's going to fall in alphabetical order. So I'm just actually going to call mine with the number one and I'm going to click on Save. Give that a few seconds to save and now you can easily um, close your DigiKit. I'm just going to close that and this time I'm going to go to the top of the screen. I'm going to click on Add Items from DigiKit and this time I want to browse for different items. First of all, this is my kit that I've just created and if I want to browse for let's say green buttons, I can easily go over here and I can type out the word button. Now every single button that's in any of my tag kits will appear and here is the button that I've got. Now the reason there's a check mark is because this button is currently in use. If I click on it, you'll see that it's no longer in use. Now if you wanted to, you could also add different things to your digital kit. So for example, let's say I like this image here and I like this image and this image. I'm going to click on done. Now they appear over here. If I now want to resave my DigiKit, all I need to do is go on DigiKit Creator and you can see that these items are now in the layout that I had originally created. I should say in the kit. Now all I need to do is resave the kit, click on Save DigiKit, click on the image and uh, the name of the kit I should say and click on Save. So that is how you can do that. Now another thing that you can do is just tag your DigiKit. To do that, click on Tag DigiKit and then go over here and start typing in different things. So I'm going to type the word gem, a space, I'll type the word pocket, a space, and I'll type the word heart and I'll click on Add. Only these three things are going to tag my kit. I'll click on Done and then I'll just click on Save DigiKit I'm going to click on my kit to select it and I'll click on save and then I'll say yes I do want it to replace my original kit. So now if I'm going to be doing a search and I go to add items from DigiKit, this time I'm only going to browse my DigiKit. All I do is type in the word that I'm looking for and as you can see gem was one of the words I tagged with my DigiKit but it doesn't tag the individual items, it only tags the kit. So you then have to open up your kit and then you have to look through it and decide is that the kind of gem that you want or not. It's actually much easier just to tag your items individually because then when you're doing a search anything that has been tagged by that name will appear. This concludes this video. Thank you for watching.